Hi folks, this is Laura from Green Tree Cooperative Grocery back with another installment uh, in the series on different herbs and spices that we've been doing with the library. So if you are watching this, presumably you have picked up a bit of this month's featured, I suppose it's an herb, not a spice, uh, hibiscus. So hopefully you are looking forward to trying this new uh, delicious flavoring out. So hibiscus, there are literally hundreds of different kinds of hibiscus native to all different tropical areas all over the world. So unlike many of the things that we'll talk about, this comes from multiple places and there are a lot of different traditions associated with it. The most commonly um, eaten type Forgive me if you speak Latin or are a botanist. My pronunciation on this may not be great. That's not my forte. Um, but the most commonly eaten and used in culinary applications is hibiscus sabdarifa. Again, don't call me on that pronunciation if you speak Latin because I'm doing my best. Um, it is most commonly found dried. We sell it in our bulk department and I have some here in a little bag. It has kind of a an earthy, slightly sweet, slightly sour smell to it when it's dry. It's, it's really pretty interesting. Almost, almost fruity. Um, and the petals, even though the flowers themselves are fairly large, the petals dry really small. You can see the kind of this dark burgundy. I wish I could get it to focus more here, but I don't think the camera wants to do it. Um, and these little petals pack a wallop. It does not take very many of these to create a really beautiful, um, bright kind of red color in just about any dish. There are other uses for all the different kinds of hibiscus um, besides the culinary uses. Obviously, they're used ornamentally a lot. People grow them just because they're beautiful. And there are some where the, not just the petals, but the sort of, I don't know the technical term for it, the fat bit under the flowers <laughs> of the plant are also eaten as a vegetable in some countries. Um, they can be used, certain types can be used to make paper or even rope. Um, because they do have a fibrous element to them as well. But today we're mostly going to talk about the food aspects. Oh, and I should uh, make mention, in a lot of different herbal guides, you will find hibiscus mentioned as potentially lowering blood pressure. Um, there's been some studies on that, not enough for me to say it's proven one way or the other, but it is something you'll see come up fairly often. And there are some indications that it's not great to have a bunch of hibiscus during pregnancy. So just keep those two things in mind if either is a concern for you. All right, so I am going to dive into this and give you a couple of different ways to use hibiscus in your cooking. I'm going to give you one recipe and then a bunch of different suggestions. The basic flavor profile is tangy, almost a little bit sour and fruity. It's really bright and interesting. The first thing you can do, and one of the most common ways it's consumed, is just make tea. And you can see how red this is. There's nothing in here but hibiscus and water. This is a, a weird size of pitcher. It's like a six cup pitcher. Um, and I just sort of eyeballed it. I filled my tea ball a little less than halfway with hibiscus and put this in here. So you can just drink it like this. It's really refreshing and good. Um, or you could use this as a base for lemonade, which is actually what I'm going to do with this. Once I've drunk enough out of the top that I can mix some in, I'm going to add uh, lemon juice and a little bit of vanilla sugar and make a hibiscus lemonade. It's beautiful, it tastes really good, provides kind of a, a visual pop on your table that classic lemonade doesn't always give, so it can be interesting for your guests when you do it that way. You could also make this tea into ice cubes. Um, so they would be the same beautiful bright red color and you could either serve those in other drinks um, or you can throw them into smoothies, like fruit smoothies to add a pop of color and flavor that you wouldn't get from just a plain ice cube. Now you can use this in 
all kinds of desserts. Like if you go searching for dessert recipes, you'll find lots of parfaits and like delicate infused baked goods and different things like that. But I thought we'd go a little bit out of the box today and I am gonna show you how to make hibiscus pickled onions. I just, I'm very excited about these. Um, I've eaten quite a few of them already. I mean, the jar was full to maybe here and packed really tight. And now they're, they're kind of loose in there because I've eaten a lot of them already. <laughs> um, but these are so good. Uh, you can use them as a, uh, a topping on things like tacos or um, roasted meats, roasted vegetables. I really like them on noodle dishes like ramen where when you finish it, you throw these on the top and you kind of scoop them in along with the other flavors. They are tangy and savory. They add a little bit of crunch and a great beautiful pop of color to whatever you put them on. Plus, they were super simple to make and really basically required a knife, a small saucepan, and this jar. So not a lot of effort for something that is really gonna give you a huge impact on your finished dish. So the first thing you wanna do to make these hibiscus pickled onions Apparently I didn't peel the label off of this. Forgive my um, <laughs> reused jars. I've got a lot of reused jars in this house. So the first thing you want to do is get a medium sized onion. I would say somewhere between a baseball and a softball. It's a somewhat forgiving recipe. So a medium sized onion. Softball may be a little big, but if you really smoosh it down into the jar, it'll work. Um, and I just cut this in half and then cut it into thin slices less than a quarter inch thick. I would say I probably went about an eighth of an inch. You can eyeball it, but the thinner that you cut them, the faster they'll be done. So I cut the onion and then put it in the jar by itself. Now you wanna do this right before you make the rest of it because you don't wanna refrigerate the onions in the jar. If the jar is cold when you pour hot liquid into it, it could potentially crack the jar. So you don't wanna do that. Now, once I had sliced up the onion and put it in the jar, then I got out a little saucepan and combined all the rest of my ingredients together. So I used, and I wrote the proportions down so I wouldn't forget when I told you guys this, uh, a half a cup of water was my starting place because you need some extra liquid. And then we're gonna add the, the tangy pickling element. And I did a mix of half apple cider vinegar, yes, I buy this by the gallon, I really like it. Um, so I used a quarter cup of apple cider vinegar. You could use a red wine vinegar or a white vinegar. I just think the flavor of this goes really well. Um, and it has other you know, benefits to it if you get the kind that has the mother in it and all of that. So anyway, quarter cup of apple cider vinegar. And then to make it really interesting, I put in a quarter cup of lime juice. So this, gave it, I think it played in really well to the fruity kind of tropical aspect of the hibiscus and just took that flavor a little bit further than if I'd used all vinegar, gave it some layers and made it more interesting and I think really goes well with tacos. I haven't tried it on fish tacos yet, but I think that would be an excellent combination. Um, if you are feeling ambitious, feel free to juice an actual lime <laughs> and make your lime juice that way. But I'm gonna be honest, I, I just went with this. Um, I like to keep a bottle of lime juice on hand because it's a great flavoring for any number of different kinds of dishes. Just like anything else, keep it in the fridge once you open it, but really handy. So then you do need to add, and not a lot, I only did one and a half tablespoons, but of sugar. This is my big old sugar jar. You can see that's been reused and washed a lot of times too. It doesn't have labels anymore. But I just used, um, un, I guess not unbleached, but un, unfiltered cane sugar. So it's got that little bit of brown to it, but that doesn't really matter. Um, you want about a tablespoon and a half of sugar. You don't want to skip the sugar because otherwise it, this finished thing can be really, really sour. It just kind of helps take the edge off that vinegar flavor. And sugar itself does act as a little bit of a preservative, so I would suggest leaving in the sugar. If you don't want to use a processed sugar, and this is minimally processed, like I said, it's the brown, like natural cane sugar, um, but you could use maple syrup instead. That'll add an additional flavor to this particular uh, preparation. 
I don't think there would be anything wrong with that. It won't be overwhelming. It's a small amount of syrup you'd be using. Uh, and then a little bit of salt. So any fine salt will do. I used a, a homemade onion salt that I had. So you can see that's got some little brown specks in it from the caramelized onions that I used. Um, but I figured I'm making pickled onions. It's got a little extra pop of onion. But again, any fine table salt will work. You could use sea salt. You could use your regular sort of shaker salt, um, fancy gray salt. Whatever you have will really work. And I did a... How much did I do? One and a half teaspoons of salt. So it's tablespoons on the sugar, teaspoons on the salt. If you mix those two up, you're going to end up with something that's not very tasty. So tablespoons on the sugar, teaspoons on the salt. And then I added two tablespoons of my dried hibiscus. So just loose tablespoons. You don't have to worry about packing it in there or anything this is where all the color is going to come from and it adds that unique fruity flavor. So I combined all of those in a little saucepan on the stove, brought it to a low simmer. You don't really want to boil. As soon as you start to see a couple of bubbles, it's probably hot enough. Give it a nice little stir to make sure the sugar's melted and that you've got all the color out of the hibiscus. And then just very carefully pour the hot liquid over the onions in the jar. Smush those onions down. Uh, until they are below the surface of the liquid. If there's too many in there, you can just scoop some out and use them for something else. If there's extra liquid, that's not gonna hurt anything. Just leave it as it is. Um, and then once you push it down below the surface of the liquid, you wanna let that sit for a half an hour to an hour. I just left it right on the counter because I knew I was gonna use it that same evening. And you'll have quick pickled onions. Um, if you've sliced your onions thicker, it will take longer to get the flavor in there. That's why I went fairly thin with mine, because I wanted to eat them right away. And once you've done that, they're, they're ready to rock. You can put them on whatever you like, and uh, you can keep them in the fridge. M they must go in the fridge once you are finished with that first kind of hour to half hour of, of sitting to let the, the vinegars and the flavors infuse into the onions. So once you're done with that, you want to put them in the fridge and they'll keep for two to three weeks in the fridge. Um, if you think that you're not going to go through them super fast, you can always use a smaller onion. I've got all of these uh, ingredients and proportions typed up on our website. You'll be able to see that and you can just cut it in half or, you know, you're having a big party or you really love onions, double it. Use two onions. Pack your jar right to the top. It will be delicious either way. So there you go, there's a couple of ideas uh, for how to use hibiscus. I hope that you enjoyed this little video and if you have any questions, throw them in the comments, uh, let the library know and we'll pass those on to you or send us a message on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. I am always happy to talk about cooking and if you have any suggestions for herbs or spices you'd like to see in the future, let us know that too. In the meantime, enjoy your day and I hope that there's a little bit of hibiscus in it. <laughs> Thanks for watching.